All right, so I've had several requests to uh, do a tutorial on how I do my power weapons. So here we go. Forgive me for any issues. This is my first time attempting to record. So uh, here we go. So uh, full disclosure, uh, I've been asked to upgrade some Salamander's power weapons. Uh, I did not paint them, but I am giving them the, the power weapon treatment. So what we're gonna start with is uh, Medea Com Art White, which is the best white that I've ever found to go through an airbrush. And for those that you don't know, Silly Putty is a fantastic masking tool. Uh, I recommend using the real brand, not the knockoffs, because it won't do quite the same. So what we're gonna start doing is start by giving it a base coat from the Medea Com Art White. Now, the Art White is a really thin white, so you don't have to use too much thinner on it, and you need to be careful to make sure that you uh, don't overdo the coats because it will pool on you. But it is a great, great white to go through the airbrush, and I haven't had the issues with spatter that I've had with other whites. So here we go, giving them each a couple nice thin coats to start us off. And again, make sure you're you're not over applying because you want a nice even surface to work with. Now I should have probably stripped these first, but I frankly don't know how to strip just part of a miniature, so we're going to work with what we've got here. I think that we can do this just fine. So starting with a nice even base coat of white. Almost there. All right. Got that one done. And there we go. Nice even base coat of white. Now we'll do the cheap method of clearing out your airbrush, just hitting it with some airbrush cleaner, wiping it through. Uh, spraying it through and make sure you don't have any residual white in there. All right, now that we got the white all through, what we can do is load our airbrush up with just a little Raven Black. I'm using uh, Raven Black from, from Badger Air. Um, mostly because that was the first line of airbrush paint I bought, but I do plan on bumping up to scale 75 once I have used that up. Alright. Making sure we're spraying nice clean black through there. And so a little thin, add a little bit of thinner still in there. There we go. All right, so now what we do is we're gonna take our steel wool and we are going to, actually first we're gonna make sure this is completely dry. Hit this with a hair dryer. Okay. 
So now we've got the steel wool kind of spread out here a little bit. And we're going to just lay this underneath it like this. And what we're looking for is just kind of creating some interesting patterns in the wool, but also not getting it so tight across the blade that it only gets the exact pattern of the wool. We want it to have a little bit more coverage so that it creates some variations. So now we're gonna spray the black through here. Just a couple nice thin coats, get some good coverage and Voila, got some cool little patterns there. Do the same thing to the other side. Again, some of the steel wool right against the blade. Oops. Some of it a little bit away from it, so we make sure that we don't have too consistent of a, of a spray. We want some clean lines and some shading in there. And just a couple nice thin coats. Okay. And awesome. So again, kind of got a cool little pattern going on there. All right. We're gonna do the same to this one. Just kind of finding a nice spot here. Right about there looks good. I'm still probably, I'm only spraying from about six inches away or so. All right, and we got some good ones on that one. And one last time on this side. And all right, not bad. There we go. All right, so I'm going to clean out my airbrush and we'll be right back. All right, we're back. I'm kind of weird. Whenever I use black, I just go ahead and do a full mini cleaning of my airbrush to make sure I don't tint my next colors. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we're using Badger Air Ghost Tint Orange against the pattern we created here. And it's actually going to create a yellow color right off the bat. But these ghost tints are, you know, what are kind of colloquial call, colloquially called candy coats. But what they are are just transparent colors that, uh, again, you know, as the name implies, tint the, the color. So you can see that the black is pretty much remaining untouched while the areas that the white touched are, are obviously taking on um, a color and that color is yellow for now. So we're gonna hit a, night, a couple thin coats on both of these to do a yellow. So what I'm, I, I've been asked to do something different than the, the um, red ones I did for, for my Sanguinary Guard weapons, and I've been asked to do a transition. So this is gonna be a bit of an experiment, but we're gonna go from uh, yellow to orange to red. And we're gonna use, do this by using the uh, ghost tent orange, which obviously starts yellow, and then ghost tent uh, blood red, both from, from Badger. So now that that first coat is on, I'm gonna hit it with a hairdryer. Make sure it's dry. All right, and do one last coat for good measure. All 
experience, you can see here that the yellow is pretty vibrant, but not overtaking the black by any means. Got two thin coats on there. Just like Duncan would want. All right, now we're gonna clean out the airbrush and then we're gonna put in the uh, Ghost Tint Blood Red. You can see my bottle is fairly well worn. I uh, moved across the country with it and it didn't survive that well, but the color's still intact and that's what counts. Though my tackle box is covered in blood red. Alright, make sure it's all cleared out of there. Spraying red, got red. All right, so with this, because the client wants it to kind of fade from red to, to orange to yellow, we're gonna spray this, this candy coat red about three quarters of the way up the blade. And that red over the yellow, for all of you color theorists out there, is going to do what? going to give us orange. Voila. Well, the lighting might be kind of bad. I might move my camera here. You can see a little bit better over there maybe. Okay. Well, it's orange. All right, so we're going to do that again over here. Again, just kind of moving about three quarters up the blade to give us a nice orange color. All right, and so now we're going to hit with the hair dryer again. And now we're just gonna build that color deeper and deeper, closer to the bottom of the blade. Give it a nice smooth transition, and then a nice deep red at the bottom of the blade. Again, sorry for my voice. I've had a cold for about the last week. Nothing like a cold in the middle of the summer to say welcome to the warm season. All right. Again, hitting it with the hair dryer. Between each coat. Make sure we don't spatter or get some pooling on there. We want a nice, even coat on the weapon. So nothing distracts from the colors that we're able to get here.
right. I think we've about done it. So let's make sure we get a nice clear capture of that. And there you have it. All that's left now is to seal it. And hopefully we'll have one happy client. Oh, there we go. All right, thanks for watching.